it's showing up on YouTube. You guys hear me okay? All right, thanks. We got some new technology here. Hi, Pat. It's Stephen. I'm here. Hi, Stephen. Good uh, morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you also. Watch out for that new technology, Jesus. We'll get you every time. Every time. <laughs> well, they, they gave us these dedicated Cisco monitors. But this thing is like humongous, so we're we're still trying to use it, learn learn how to use it, I should say. So, so no, so you might be streaming like live basketball games during the NCAA tournament or something to get the big screen effect. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try not to share my screen when I do that. <laughs> Luis Mota, buenos días. ¿Qué tal, vato? Hola, buenos días. I say 
Luis, you and I just do our whole role in Spanish, and uh, Pat can translate. Como quieras. <laughs> My, my microphone just died, so um, I, I won't be able to help you. <laughs> <laughs> I can help translate in Spanglish. There you go. Try German if it helps. <laughs> okay. Jesus and um, Mario, if you're on, Chris Brady will be here for RMC, so he will take care of the RMC meeting. Thank you. Chair Strunk, it is 11 o'clock and we, I can take a roll if you are ready to call the meeting to order. I sure am. Can you hear me, Pat? Yeah. Yes. Great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Pat. I'd like to call the January 6, uh, 2021 joint meeting to order. Um, Happy New Year, everyone, to start it off. Um, hopefully you had a nice, safe holiday and we'll look forward to a great New 2021. Pat, if you'd like to take the roll call, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Gina Montez, um, City of Avondale. Roger Klinginger, City of Buckeye. Josh Wright from the City of Chandler. Josh Wright is here. At Autumn Grooms from the city of El Mirage. Dave, Tri Dave Trimble from the town of Fountain Hills. Here. Mary Goodman from the town of Gilbert. Kevin Phelps from the city of Glendale. Julie Arendahl from the city of Goodyear. Here. Reed Kempton from Maricopa County. I'm. Chris Brady, Jody Sorrell, or Scott Butler from the city of Mesa. Chris and Jody are here. Okay. Eric Strunk, city of Peoria. Here. Jesus Sapien or Mario Paniagua from the city of Phoenix. Jesus Sapien, president of Counter Four. Bruce Gardner from the town of Queen Creek. I'm here. Okay. Dave Meinhart from the city of Scottsdale. Here. Mike Gent from the city of Surprise. Uh, Stephen Methvin from the city of Tempe. I'm here, Pat. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum and we can proceed. Oh, this is thank Mike Jent from Surprise. I'm here too. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. I have you.
Great. Thank you, Pat. We will, we will begin. Um, just a quick reminder, if any committee member would like to ask a question or make a comment during the meeting, uh, please type your comment in the comment box and it will be read aloud and answered. Um, otherwise, if all uh, to preserve the bandwidth, if you could kind of mute your microphone in between, that'd be wonderful. With that, uh, Pat, uh, any uh, public comment received? Um, I know they're being taken via written format. Anything you'd like to report on that? Uh, no, there's no public comment uh, received for today. All right, thank you. We'll move on to item number two, Chief Executive Officer's Report. And I'd like to call on Scott Smith for this report. Scott? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and welcome, everybody. Happy New Year. And uh, uh, for us, uh, at least, the new year is starting off with a couple of uh, good things uh, financially. Uh, I would say uh, probably Christmas gifts, uh, so to speak. The first one is uh, right around Christmas, uh, Congress passed the uh, what we call CARES Act funding uh, to CARES Act two. Uh, this included this act uh, did not include anything for cities or states in it. Fourteen billion dollars in aid for public transportation. Uh, and just want to make you aware of that, that uh, this will be available to us. Uh, the uh, the fourteen billion dollars will be uh, portioned uh, by the FTA based on formula, much like the CARES Act one monies were. It will come through MAG uh, right now, unless the change MAG has uh, indicated uh, that we'll follow the same kind of distribution we did before, uh, which means it would be it be sent out to the operators uh, of uh, transit uh, activities, uh, and then would funnel down to you as individual cities through the IGAs that we have with you. So you will get the direct benefit of this by the fact that you will not have to uh, advance funds to Valley Metro out of your budgets for activities that would be covered by the CARES Act funding. This amount of funding will be less than what was in CARES Act 1. It is also limited to uh, by, uh, by the statute uh, to a total uh, of um, of uh, uh, CARES money that goes to any region uh, or any area uh, to 75% of the 2018 operating budget. So you take what we got in CARES 1, you uh, you look at what, uh, what we need to make up 75% and that will be the amount. We'll get you the numbers uh, and through your staff within the next few days, as soon as we receive word from FTA and we coordinate with MAG uh, what, what that will happen, but it will be a, a play an integral role in your uh, fiscal 21-22 budgeting as we look at how we're gonna apply that, uh, that CARES Act funding. So that, that was really good news. So if we go on the next slide, the second good news, and this just happened today, you can see there's a, a screenshot. FTA Deputy Administrator K. Jane Williams uh, actually signing the uh, full funding grant agreement just today, it was announced uh, she signed uh, on behalf of the FTA, uh, Mayor Gallego signed on behalf of the region as uh, City of Phoenix is the designated recipient uh, for the $530 million uh, grant agreement that, uh, that was announced uh, uh, at the beginning of December, it passed through the 30-day uh, review period in Congress and was signed just today. So that is signed, sealed, delivered. We're excited about that because it brings certainty to that project, we will which is already under construction, as you all know. Uh, we will proceed forward uh, with the funding sources um, uh, um, in place and move toward a completion uh, of in 2024 and hopefully uh, late 2024 or so uh, begin uh, um, uh, uh, scheduled operations of that 5.5 million, 5.5 mile extension uh, from downtown to baseline and uh, a lot of work in the downtown area through the downtown herb, downtown hub. As you all know, this is uh, really a, a, a good example of resilience and perseverance. Uh, this uh, project uh, uh, had many ups and downs and went through a, a lot of uh, a controversy, uh, political controversy especially, uh, which also led to the, uh, to the August 2019 initiative, which was the first time in this region that uh, an electorate had been given an, a straight up or down vote on light rail. Uh, the citizens of Phoenix went to the uh, went to the ballots uh, with the opportunity to either support or to kill 
the light rail project, uh, light rail uh, program, not only in Phoenix, but it would have had the effect of killing it basically throughout the valley. And yet the citizens overwhelmingly 65, 35 vo voted to support uh, and invest ongoing investment in light rail. So I, I think as we look at that uh, and we, we, we see the support that we have, and especially uh, we take that uh, while not totally definitive, <coughs> as we look at Prop 400 extension and, and uh, what we perceive is the, uh, is the appetite of our citizenry for investments in transportation and transit, and we look at the results of when they are actually asked straightforward questions like this, it, uh, it bodes well for the future of, of, of transit and transportation in the valley so thank you to the department of transportation fta uh, both in washington and at region nine our partners with the city of phoenix uh, who worked with us diligently on on this project since it is in phoenix and also just the region in general for the ongoing support especially uh, this is important for us uh, because uh, one person that probably uh, gave uh, uh, his heart and soul to this uh, uh, before he left Congress was Congressman Ed Pastor. Uh, this is truly a legacy to him. The whole system is a legacy to him, but especially this uh, this project, this extension, because it's something he worked diligently on and, and was uh, was very much involved in. So I had the opportunity to talk to Verma Pastor this morning and give her the good news. And uh, she was uh, understandably excited. And I was very, very proud and pleased to be able to have that conversation with her. Next slide. Uh, along with this, the second uh, uh, bit of good news is that uh, while we don't have a funding agreement in place, the federal government announced an additional $49 million budget allocation to the Northwest Extension Phase 2. This brings to a total of around $100 million that have been, had, that have been set aside in the budget, although not formally committed, uh, for, the, uh, for this extension. Uh, we especially want to uh, uh, congratulate and, and thank uh, a former uh, Valley Metro board member and outgoing Phoenix Council member Thelda Williams, who has been a longtime supporter of transit in this valley and especially light rail. Uh, this is in her backyard and she has long pushed for this and we are, uh, we are absolutely grateful for the support we've had inside Phoenix and in the region and at the FTA for, for this exciting project that will Connect uh, Metro Center, which will develop soon into, I, I believe, an exciting uh, transit-oriented development and transition project. And it will be a legacy to, to Council Member uh, uh, Thelda Williams, and we uh, want to thank her, and especially for her time on, on the board uh, as she served Valley Metro. We look, uh, we look forward to a, uh, having the same kind of good news about a grant agreement later this year, and uh, our staff is working diligently with FTA to move that uh, that process forward. We have already begun construction, by the way, on Northwest Extension uh, 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 in, in anticipation of, uh, of uh, the formalization of the grant agreement. And then next slide. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, the calendar upcoming. As you can see, the board uh, study session in January will focus on budget considerations, just so you're aware of, of that. We'll be talking. And one thing I want to bring up uh, and it, it's something I've had, uh, I've, I've talked with uh, the East Valley uh, managers in their meeting last week, and I'll also bring it up again in the West Valley, is when we come into the budget, there is a, a, a bit of confusion, especially where we talk about CARES money and how this is funneling uh, through uh, MAG, through uh, um, City of Phoenix and Valley Metro as the two largest providers, not the only, but the largest operators in the in the Valley, and how it impacts your city budgets. and. Uh, I will tell you there is some confusion at the elected officials and the board uh, level as to how this all functions. So we're going to try and uh, help uh, straighten that out and let uh, let the uh, uh, the our board members and your electeds know and better understand uh, the funding mechanism. As I think uh, came out in our presentation on Prop 400 extension, uh, Eric Anderson pointed out that about 70% of transit activities in the valley are actually funded by cities. Only 30% is funded by the region. Uh, therefore, it's it's very much a much of a bottom up approach, and uh, and and you, and it starts with what the cities, what you want in your city, and what you want to fund, and then you work that upwards really to us. Um, that becomes confusing when you have that bottom up approach on day to day, and yet you have things like the CARES Act that is really a top down, and they meet in the middle. And so, if you could. Uh, 
if you have any questions or could uh, help us to make that uh, that uh, clear uh, to uh, our electeds, because uh, I understand the uh, their challenge as they look at city budgets and how you uh, look at those, and then they also come to the board at Valley Metro and look at Valley Metro budget, and it becomes a little bit confusing as to how those two work uh, in uh, uh, jointly to uh, to uh, provide transit services in the valley. So, Mr. Chair, that's my report. Great, thank you. Do, do any of the uh, committee members have any questions for Mr. Smith on his uh, report? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to item number three, the COVID-19 update. Uh, Scott, do you have anything to share on that? Big update was simply with the CARES Act money. We are moving forward uh, with the things that we've reported on. Our ridership has, uh, has leveled off uh, and we seem to have fought uh, begun some sort of normalcy, and uh, we've done some studies. And just so you know, we have uh, over 98% compliance with masks, uh, and people seem to be uh, seem to be working uh, to maintain uh, social distancing. Uh, one of the issues that we do have, uh, which is uh, constantly, which we were aware of, and 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 were uh, uh, were somewhat concerned about, is that most of our uh, security issues, as it relates our Passenger to passenger. Luckily, those have been few and far between, but we do have some differences with mask wearing, non mask wearing uh, that happen every great once in a while on both our buses and our and our trains. But I just want you to, to know that that is uh, uh, is not widespread. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have uh, um, a, a public that I believe has uh, much maybe in, in contrary to what you have seen with the uh, exceptions. Uh, has adopted uh, the uh, the standard procedures uh, for distancing and mask wearing and are participating uh, and cooperating in this endeavor. We are also proceeding with the installation, both the city, starting with the city of Phoenix, of the barriers that we uh, we uh, have described over the last couple three months. Uh, those should be done sometime this spring, which will provide us uh, both in, in the uh, the entire fleet of uh, city of Phoenix and Valley Metro. Uh, so 900 plus buses and, and vehicles, and we are anticipating that that will um, um, that will actually provide benefits on uh, on a lot of things, uh, not only with the COVID, but also from a security standpoint. It'll make our operators safer, more secure, uh, both for their health reasons and for their physical security. So uh, everything's moving ahead, and uh, and uh, we're uh, we're in spite of this. Um, of this uh, a crisis, we are continuing. Our team has been done an incredible job in continuing to provide top-notch service um, uh, throughout the valley, and we're proud of them for that. Great, thank you, Mr. Smith, and and congratulations on the grants. That's just thank you for sharing that. That's good news, and uh, hopefully you'll keep the the momentum going here. Um, with that, we'll move on to item number four: minutes. And I'd like to see if anyone would like to motion acceptance approval of the November 4th, 2020 joint TMC RMC meeting minutes. Um, do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, Klingler from Buckeye, I move approval. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Um, any opposed? Um, who just seconded the motion? Sorry, that was me, Dave Trimble. Oh, thank you. All right, so we have a first and a second on the meeting minutes from November 4th. Um, any opposed? All right, we'll move on. And we are now in our regular agenda item section. And we have item number five, light rail single track operations plan for downtown Phoenix hub construction. And again, I'll call on Mr. Smith to present that item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and uh, in conjunction with the uh, with the construction of the uh, uh, the uh, South Central Extension Downtown Hub project, we will have some major disruptions and changes in operations of our light rail that will impact the entire system and will also, of course, in, impact uh, its uh, uh, and disrupt its uh, its connection with bus service and other services. And I'll turn it out uh, over to our project manager, Luis Moda. Who can go over what these changes will be, um, Luis? Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Luis Mota, as, as Scott said. And um, so, 
As Scott also said, it, it, this does, uh, the South Central project requires installation of special track and track work that does affect the entire light rail system. So today we're going to uh, cover just the high level scope of work, our approach, um, the impacts from that, uh, customer considerations we've taken into account, and then uh, summarize with the planning process for the communication and operation that precedes this. The, uh, you're going to note that the presentation has been condensed from the presentation in your package just to focus on, on the key points. Um, I will stop my video too just to make sure that uh, you can, uh, that there are no glitches in the bandwidth here. So you should still see the slides. Um, moving through here, bear with me. So just a quick overview of the project of the South Central and the downtown hub. As, as Scott mentioned, it's five and a half miles of new track extending from downtown to baseline and central. It connects South Central to the downtown. And a key element of doing that is the uh, downtown hub, which not only it facilitates a uh, future two-line system, it's uh, for a more mature system with uh, potential for uh, east-west and north-south lines. Here's a uh, uh, zooming into the downtown hub just to show the configuration. The new station will have three platforms around the, uh, in the downtown hub area surrounding cityscape. In total, the four platform platform locations accommodate transfers between those east-west and north-south lines. But in order to facilitate the new train movements, it does require the new track and special track work um, to be installed. So the new hub design includes nine interface points, uh, as shown here on the slide. These include um, the new track and special track work for those interface face points do overlap the existing light rail track, which means construction of these portions requires shutting down the affected track. Each installation can require anywhere from four to 28 days uh, because they vary in uh, complexity. And similar to what we did on Tempe Streetcar for the single tracking, uh, the nearest available crossover points uh, surrounding the work are what determines what the impacts are to our headway train schedules. In this case, the nearest existing crossovers, places where a train can switch from one track to the other, is at Culver, north of McKinley, and at 11th Street, east of uh, downtown. So these crossing point locations make a di big difference because uh, with one track down, obviously only one train can traverse through downtown in this case at a time in either direction while the opposing train must wait for the track to clear. So based on the spacing of the crossovers and the station frequency, uh, the traffic, the number of lights, uh, it is calculated 30 minute headways we count as the best uh, reliable schedule adjustment that can be done when we work on one side of the track. On the plus side, um, the project does include two new crossover locations that can be used for a shorter single tracking section, which would shorten those adjustments in the future. And those two new locations are at Fifth Street and at McKinley. And now McKinley does have a crossover, but this is adding the crossover movement from the north. Um, you can currently um, go from the south end. So we'll build, we'll build these first uh, with the goals of not only com to complete and activate the new crossovers before we start, the more impactful and complicated special track work in the downtown hub area that we showed you earlier. And that allows us to have a better train schedule when, um, when we do that work. Another approach that worked well on Tempe Streetcar was combining um, work to reduce the amount of events that we have for single tracking affecting the train schedules. Uh, so instead of uh, applying nine different single tracking events, we've combined what we can um, into groups to minimize those number of events. So this event, this approach does reduce the amount of single tracking events. It provides more flexibility to address any surprises that happen uh, during construction with the schedule because you have a couple areas you can move back and forth to. It's also uh, much simpler and easier to communicate to the public and um, and then by combining the first sections, we're able to accommodate uh, and simplify with shorter train schedule uh, changes during the 2022 work that will happen as we'll get into here in a bit. So 
scheduling was based on a few factors of uh, ridership, taking into account even the current pandemic situation, uh, special track availability. Uh, these are long lead items, the special track work, and we have to get out in line for other people that are ordering special track work. And uh, that long lead ordering was dependent on federal authorization, which we've obtained a while back, but we had to wait uh, for that to happen. Uh, once that happened, we did uh, uh, adjust the special track deliveries once we decided we we're going, going to combine areas to make sure we can get the, the, the sections done earlier to allow us, again, as I pointed out earlier, to accommodate the hub area. And uh, so that while ridership is still low too and below average as things return to normal uh, for the first pieces. So the work does start now. Uh, Pre-demolition has started at 5th and Washington. Uh, but that's not the single tracking. That's pre-demolition that we're doing uh, during uh, the non-operation hours so that we can't have a shorter um, a single tracking period. So here are the dates for all the, all the locations. Uh, for now, as I mentioned, we have been able to combine a few locations. For example, 1, 2, and 3 will happen together, and 3, 4, and 5 will happen in another single event. Uh, the downtown hub work is in 2022 that schedule and timing is under review and i'm sure we'll have another discussion when that when that's going to happen but our preparation does require four key task forces uh the first is the construction planning which includes very detailed planning with even to the extent of hour by hour schedules for construction material reviews ordering all of that uh, those types of things safety and security is our is our other task force uh, for the safety of not just the public but the construction personnel operations which covers everything from new train schedules negotiating temporary operation operator agreements and the evaluation of bus schedule impacts which is a common question with regard to the bus impacts we did look at the bus schedules and compared against a temporary headway schedule uh, the analysis shows that revising the bus schedules temporarily for the for the period of time that we do the single tracking actually creates a greater passenger impacts on a network uh, on a network wide level so um so that won't there were no changes there but um so that's all the operations task force and then the fourth and final is a is a communications and public outreach which is um, a very intense planning process for single tracking and for that uh madeline phipps is yep. also on the call and is prepared to just give you a quick summary of our communications plan Good morning, everyone. I'm Madeline Phipps. I'm a public information specialist here at Valley Metro. Um, I just wanted to go over a few highlights of the things and the ways we'll be communicating with our writers and the public. Um, so first of all, we have announcements planned for rail stations and on board our buses. Um, we'll be utilizing rider alerts through our alert via map and on the Valley Metro website. Uh, we'll also be posting organic and paid social media campaigns um, we will have signs at all of our rail stations and also at um, along some of our high transfer frequency bus routes, as well as uh, park and rides and transit centers. Um, we also, depending on you know safety and how things look in the next month or two, we may do some outreach with our frontline staff when these two um, weeks start to happen at some of our highest ridership stations. We also have our customer experience coordinators who work throughout the rail system and will be able to educate riders before and during these occurrences. Um, of course, we'll have media outreach through media advisories um, and our community outreach team has already been at work meeting with different stakeholders and major organizations um, in downtown Phoenix and also throughout the rail system who may be impacted. Um, and finally, we've been coordinating with our member cities for additional opportunities to collaborate and communicate further. Okay, thank you, Madeline. And for the, let's see, just to bring it all together, um, overall, uh, we've taken what worked well on the previous single tracking that we've done on Tempe streetcar. So any lessons learned, any things that we tried over there that we made sure we took the best of that, um, that was a success. And so there was a lot of good things that came out of it. Uh, the biggest consideration uh, to the customer is combining the work at multiple locations so that we do reduce the number of single tracking events. Um, th those benefits are, you know, we do have a longer duration, but we do it at once and we have less events. And 
The result is clearer messaging, uh, more consistent schedules, and a more reliable service um, that based on the low level of complaints when we did this before, it seemed to be a very effective approach. Um, combining it, as I mentioned, also provides us extra level of assurance of finishing on time because we can do multiple locations at once and give us some flexibility, uh, especially when you're working in near downtown where there's a lot of surprises when you start opening the ground. Uh, and then um, the key to this is to establish the expectations for the public. We put a lot of effort uh, to move the first round of work up as early as possible, which took some work with the contractor and the, the uh, delivery of the special track work. But the, the purpose of that was so that our longest headways will take place before things return completely back to normal from the, the current pandemic events. And so that is... Uh, the end of our presentation. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, Luis and Madeline Scott. Um, do any of the committee members have any questions about this project? It's, it's pretty big. A lot of coordination's gone in, and and um, I think you've done a really good job of of the outreach piece of making sure those that are impacted know ahead of time. So um, hats off to you for that. Any questions of the committee? Okay, that was an informational item. So we'll now move on. There are no questions to item number six, and this is an action item. It's IT Project Management Consulting Services. And again, I'd like to call on Mr. Smith to uh, uh, provide a short overview of that. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. This uh, may look somewhat familiar to you. This came before this. Uh, uh, the uh, the committees a couple months ago, there was questions both at the management level and the uh, board level as to uh, what exactly we were trying to per we were trying to uh, accomplish here. So I uh, sent it back to our uh, Jim Hilliard and our IT staff, and they uh, came up with a different plan. And uh, uh, what you see now is a very much a scaled down uh, plan to meet our IT needs on a service planning standpoint. And if there are any questions, I can have Jim. Uh, explain to you what those are. If not, we can just move ahead. I, we weren't planning on a presentation, but if there are questions uh, about the, the revisions that were made and the and scaling down, we can uh, we can do that. Oh, it's, uh, uh, that's right. Uh, Phil Oslin would uh, handle the questions, not Jim. Great. So, Mr. Do, Mr. Chair, if there's any questions, we'd be more than happy to, uh, Phil would be more than happy to look at those uh, or uh, address those. Uh, if not, uh, it's just presented for your uh, presentation. This is the scaled down version of what was presented a couple months ago. Great. Uh, any questions from the, the members? All right. Um, if not, I'll need a motion and a second to advance this to the Board of Directors uh, for final authorization. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, this is Jesus with the City of Phoenix. I move approval. This is Mike Gent, City of Surprise. I second. Thank you. We have a first and a second to move this forward. Do we have anyone uh, in, in, I hate to use the term opposition, anyone against? All right, we'll move it forward to the board and we'll move on to item number seven, uh, travel expenditures and solicitations. It's an informational item. Any questions, observations uh, from, from any of the members, attendees? I'm not hearing any, so we'll go into item number eight. Um, any requests for future agenda items? And would anyone or would anyone like to uh, report on any current events in their in their area? All right, greeted with silence. So with that, um, I'll just mention uh, thank you all. Our next meeting will be on February 3rd, 2021 at 10 a.m. And uh, we'll probably do it virtually again, Scott, and um, I, I would imagine. So with that, we'll conclude that meeting. We'll move into the Transit Management Committee meeting. And again, I'd like to welcome uh, the members to our January meeting. Um, Pat, um, same question as before. Any item number one, any public commentary you need to share? Um, no, and just to note, the meeting is scheduled for the the meeting in February is scheduled for eleven. I'm sorry, that was a typo on your script. It is a it's for eleven in February, not ten. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I think I said uh, ten. It does say eleven. So thank you. 
Oh, okay, great. Yeah, no uh, public comment. Um, I did receive a message from Blue, so I'll call him later today. Okay. All right. No public comments. So uh, we'll move on to the minutes. Um, we have revised minutes from October 7th, 2020, and then we have, uh, we'll need a motion to, uh, wait, hang on a second here. Pat, would that be November? Uh, no, sir. TMC did not meet in November. It was okay, just a joint right. in RMC, so we have minutes left over from October that need to be approved. Very good. So we'll need a first and second to uh, approve the revised meeting minutes of the TMC from October 7th, 2020. Mr. Chairman, Roger from Buckeye, I move approval. Thanks. Do I have a second? Julie, good year and second. Great. All in favor? Yes. We'll move on. Um, consent agenda. We have a couple items today. Um, any questions on any of the items on the consent agenda? It's a compressed natural gas facility maintenance contract change order. And the second item is uh, Phoenix uh, Regional Communications Project Agreement Change Order. Any, any questions or would anyone like a presentation on either of those items? If not, I'll take a motion and a second to move those forward. Mr. Chair, this is Jesus with Phoenix. I move approval. Do I have a second? Anyone want to take Julie, a second? Julie, you a second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Julie. All right. Um, any uh, any opposed? All right. Fantastic. We will move those forward. Now we'll kind of jump into the regular agenda item number four. Um, recommended April 2021 transit service changes. Um, and this is an action item. Scott, I don't know if you have anything you want to share with this particular one. If not, um, we can take a motion in a second to move this forward as well. Yeah, uh, no, there's no presentation. These are just if there are if there are questions on the changes, the changes are pretty straightforward. We've discussed them in the in the in the past, and they've been uh, discussed uh, uh, in detail with your staff members. And uh, unless there's any questions, uh, we had no uh, no uh, uh, plans to give a presentation on it. Great. Any questions on any any related items in, in this uh, item number four from the, the group? Mr. Chair, this is Jesus with City of Phoenix. I had a quick question. Uh, Scott, I believe sure we're working with your staff to make changes to um, uh, Route 108, I believe it was, on the west end, but I don't see that on here. Uh, do we know what happened to that one? Uh, Joe, are you uh, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, Joe Gregory will handle that. Uh, Jesus, Joe. Yeah, well, the, the, this um, this board memo only covers what's um, uh, paid for with PTF or is operated by by Valley Metro. So when it's locally funded and it's a Phoenix operated route, it doesn't show up on on this board memo. Okay, I looked at the list and I thought it showed joint funding, but I will double check that. Thank you. Right. And, and one other, one other small thing, um, the 514, when, when it goes to the board, it will be removed from this memo. Uh, we, it will just have a, basically a funding swap between Scottsdale and Fountain Hills, but it'll stay as is, as far as the, the customers are concerned, um, moving forward, at least through April. Any other questions or observations on this item? Okay, we'll need uh, a motion and a second to move these forward. Do I have a first and second? Mr. Chair, this is Jesus, City of Phoenix. I move approval. Do I have a second? Uh, Dave Meinhardt, City of Scottsdale, second. Thank you, Dave. Any opposed? All right. Uh, I here in me, so we'll move on to the, the very next item, which is future agenda items requests and any reports on, on current events. Anyone want to share anything? All right. Quiet group for 2021 so far. That's all right. Um, so the next meeting will be on February 3rd, again at 11 a.m. 
And I think with that, we'll conclude both of these meetings and I will pass the baton over to Mr. Brady and, and Mesa for the, the rail portion of it. So thank you all and have a good month. We'll see you next month. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> we good to go, Pat? Yes, sir, we are. Okay. Very good. Want to convene uh, the meeting of the uh, Rail Management Committee for Wednesday, January 6th. Um, imagine, uh, Pat, any comment on the public comment side? No. Okay, so we have the minutes from the November 4th, 2020 RMC meeting are presented for approval. I request a motion and a second to approve the RMC meeting minutes from November 4th, 2020. Don't be shy. Uh, there's only a few of you. Come on. Mr. Chair, I move approval of minutes. All right. We have a motion for approval. We have do we have a second? I'll second. Josh Wright. Thank, thank you, Josh. Hey, Suze was the motion. Josh was the second. Okay. Very good. All those in favor, raise your hand or okay. Anybody opposed? Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> We're now to item three, business assistance consultants contract awards. Mr. Smith, do you want to some yeah, I'm going to have Hillary uh, Foose give uh, a, 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 a summary of both items three and four. They really, while they're separate on the agenda and need separate actions, well, we can vote them on at once. They're really, uh, they're really uh, uh, conjoined. Uh, and so, Hillary, why don't you uh, give a brief overview of, of items three and four so everyone knows what's going on here? Yes, thank you, Scott, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, happy to be talking to you today about business assistance efforts for uh, businesses along our two active Phoenix construction corridors, uh, South Central Extension Downtown Hub and Northwest Extension Phase 2. Um, as you know, um, when we build light rail business assistance programming is a very important component of what we do. We want to see these businesses uh, thrive during construction and be there with us into operations. Um, these two programs uh, are intended to support them as best we can and add to um, the programming that we already provide. The first item, item three, is something that should be familiar um, to Tempe and Mesa as we've offered uh, business assistance consulting support to businesses as part of our business assistance programming for years. And this is really, this action is really to get this program set up by bringing on board seven different professional consultant groups to help uh, the businesses along these corridors with uh, their consulting needs, whether they need to set up a website, they need to set up a point of sale system, they need help with human resources. Uh, we do an assessment of the businesses who want to participate and provide them with these consultant resources to help them to ensure that they can be set up and, and survive through construction. Um, as you can see in the memo, um, the costs are really defined by um, uh, what those consulting hours would cost us. And the reason we want seven contract awards here is we really want a bench of experts who are experts in various areas to make sure that we can support businesses in all the areas that they need. Um, this is funded by the projects, by South Central and Northwest Phase Two project budgets, which as you know, is a mix of Phoenix, PTF and federal, and it's within our budget. On item number four, um, this is actually a new program um, of Valley Metro's um, and really Valley Metro Rail is a pass through and will be the administrator um, through the support of a nonprofit here um, that we're this that's what this contract award is about. But with the support of the city of Phoenix and actually funding from the city of Phoenix, 
Um, we are moving forward with a new program, the Small Business Financial Assistance Pilot Program, um, to provide direct financial assistance to small micro businesses immediately adjacent to adjacent to the two corridors mentioned. Um, we have done levels of um, financial assistance in the past, rebate programs, vouchers through the utilities, particularly in Mesa, we had a lot of success. Um, this is an extension of learning from those best practices of the past and also listening to the business community for their needs and also learning from our peers. So the financial assistance program is um, entirely locally funded, um, funded by the City of Phoenix T2050, as well as the Phoenix Community Development and Investment Corporation, or PCDIC. And we do hope to get other outside private sector partners involved as well. So there's no project uh, funding um, associated with this program. And this uh, contract award is about bringing on board an administrator to help us facilitate that program. Um, and as you can see, there are a few blanks left in this memo as we will be evaluating the proposal that we have actually this afternoon. And we will have this completely filled in and prepared for the board meeting on the 21st. With that long-winded explanation, I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. Thanks, Hillary. That This is actually, this is really good. This is, uh, I'm glad we're continuing to refine our small business program. I think that's wonderful. Uh, any questions or comments for Scott or Hillary on the on these items? Mr. Chair, I had some comments. City of Phoenix. Sure, go ahead. I just want to thank Scott and Hillary and the rest of the team for continuing to work with us on this. Uh, many of us have been working um, extensively within the community for several yeah. years now on these two important projects, especially South Central and Northwest Extension. And I just want to reiterate, you know, not only our at the staff level commitment, but especially our mayor and council uh, unanimous support of this, uh, these types of agreements on city of Phoenix's end recently. Uh, they are also very committed to ensuring that uh, local businesses get the attention, uh, the support, the expertise, uh, technical or otherwise, uh, to get through these uh, tough times. Um, so... Thank you to Scott and Hillary for everything that they've done and recognizing um, our city council's uh, focus on basically making sure that uh, these projects are on easy on the community as they can be. So thank you for everything. And with that, I don't know if we need to thank do you. separately, but uh, I would move approval on these items. Thank you. Kelly, did you have something to say? No, I just wanted to echo Hayes' comments. Thank you for that. The, the mayor, our board member, and the city council have been really pushing us to this, um, this particularly this new program, the financial assistance. So, uh, you know, a lot of thank you to our board member. Hi, Mr. Right. Chair. It's, um, if you're ready for a second, it's Stephen from Tempe. And I just want to add that it's been a lifesaver for some of our businesses in Tempe through the the streetcar uh, uh, project, and we're we're we've been super uh, appreciative of uh, Valley Metro's involvement in the in the program. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. All right, so we have a motion and a second for items three and four. Uh, let's just vote on them together, if that's okay, since they were presented together. And if nobody opposes, we'll consider items three and four together. We have motions and seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Thank you. Anybody opposed? All right. Thank you very much. All right. I think we're ready to move on to item number five. Thank you, Mr. Oracle. Chair. Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Yeah, and uh, because of the size of this, and just to give you some understanding of what we work with, I'd like Jennifer Pine who is our deputy director of our capital and services division. And also with Wolf Groats retirement is the acting director uh, of this, uh, of this division. So Jen, if you could get a brief overview as to what this a connects uh, uh, issue is. Sure. Uh, hello, everybody. So uh, Aconex is the document control software that we use for our rail construction projects um, to uh, keep organized all of our financial uh, design documentation, really all the documentation that we need to retain for those projects. Uh, so we started using Aconex in 2015. 
Um, and what this item is, is to renew um, our contract um, to continue to use Aconex for our document control. Uh, I'll, I'll note that this was um, approved by the board in September um, for the same amount of money. Um, at that time, we were pursuing a contract directly with Oracle. Um, so, um, so that was approved by the board in September. Since that time, um, we had continued negotiations with Oracle and were not able to come to terms on uh, some of the things that we require to be included in the contract because uh, federal dollars go to pay for, for some of this. Uh, so we uh, instead have worked out um, an agreement with DLT, which is, uh, they're a reseller of Oracle products, and we already work with them for some of our other products at Valley Metro. They agreed to honor the price that we had agreed to with Oracle. So with this action, there's no change in the dollars. Uh, the difference is that we would be entering into a contract um, with DLT rather than Oracle. Good, thank you. Any questions? All right, can I get a motion for item five? Come on, Asus, you've been yeah, good it, on the roll. Here we go, I, Betty. I, I figured we could take turns for once. <laughs> Mr. Chair, this is Jesus with City of Phoenix. I move approval of item six. Very good. And Mr. Chair, it's Stephen with Tempe. I, I will second that motion. Thank you, Stephen. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor uh, for the approval of item five? Okay, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, we're moving on to item six. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Brady. And I'll turn it over to Paul Hodgins, who can talk about uh, our mid year budget adjustments. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the RMC, we are requesting a mid-year budget adjustment for Valley Metro Rail. Um, it's related uh, primarily to the capital activities only for South Central Extension and Northwest Extension Phase 2. Uh, we just have some differences in timing. Uh, we'll be spending some of the money sooner uh, than we had uh, originally thought. Uh, with South Central, we didn't have any of the milestone payments program for the revenue vehicles, uh, so we've had to move that up. Those were initially programmed in fiscal 22, so we've moved that up. Uh, the one thing I will note, we've, we're showing uh, strictly local sources to cover these, but uh, obviously with the full funding grant agreement signed today, we'll revisit that. It's likely that we'll have some uh, federal funds to apply, at least against South Central. Northwest Extension Phase 2 will still be uh, locally funded for now. Uh, so, as I mentioned, uh, right now showing just member city contributions, we'll revisit this. Uh, so when it goes to the board, we'll make sure that we have federal funds included, whatever we believe is available. Uh, again, it's a, an increase overall of about $86 million to the capital budget only just for those projects. And as I said, it, it, this, uh, it's strictly just a timing issue. It does not impact uh, the overall project costs. Those are still the same. It's just uh, a timing on those expenses. Uh, so with that brief explanation, uh, we would look for uh, your authorization to uh, send this to the Board of Directors for approval. All right. Thanks, Paul. It's always good to see when we can get things going faster than we expected. So that's good. All right. We Any questions? All right. Ready for a motion on this one. Mr. Chair, oh. this is City of Phoenix. I move approval. Thank you. We have a second. It's Stephen from City of uh, Tempe for a second. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the uh, fiscal year 2021 mid year budget adjustments? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, very good. Thank you. We're moving on to item seven. Are there any agenda items for future meetings? that anybody would like to uh, request at this time? No, Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay. Um, that our next meeting is Wednesday, February 3rd at 11 a.m. Thank you all very much. Pat, thank you. Scott, everyone, staff, thanks for putting all this together. 
Thanks, everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.